Well, hello, everybody. We are on the fourth Sunday of Advent, so I am going to light the fourth candle on our wreath. Do you remember we've had one for the patriarchs and matriarchs, people like Abraham and Sarah, who had God's promise told to them at the very beginning. And we had one for Isaiah and the other prophets. We had last week one for John the Baptist who came to prepare Jesus' way to get people ready. This week, we are lighting a candle for Mary. And we hear in today's Bible story that the angel Gabriel came to Mary in her home in Nazareth. She came, the angel Gabriel came to give Mary a very special message. And because the angel Gabriel came to Mary's home, I thought I'd tell you that story from my home. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and we be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called son of God and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said here I am the servant of of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, Mary Mary had a visit from the angel Gabriel. The angel Gabriel came to Mary where she was. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to Nazareth where Mary lived. I don't know about you, but I have had some Christmas cards with angels on them. And I've also found some 
Christmas decorations of angels. Don't know if you've got any in your house or on your Christmas tree, or maybe you've been into St Andrew's Church recently and you've had a look at the windows. Some of the windows have got angels in them, haven't they? And do you remember I've said before that in our, on our church roof, there used to be carved angels with great big wings, but unfortunately we've only got the bodies left because the wings got so old they fell off. But if you go into churches, you often see carvings or pictures of angels. And all those angels, just like all these angels, all those angels look different because of course nobody knows what an angel looks like. Nobody knows. In the Bible, the word angel means messenger. God gives his message to Mary, his message that she is going to be his, the mother of Jesus, God's son. I wondered if today you might like to make an angel. I was given this angel on Saturday at our winter fair. I don't know if you went to the winter fair, you might have been given one too. So a mother's union gave me a beautiful bag which had this angel in it and some other lovely things. So I thought we might have a go at making an angel a bit like this. If you would like to, you need a piece of paper. I always use old paper, don't I? You could use new paper or old paper and it doesn't matter what colour it is, whatever colour you would like your angel to be. When you've got your paper, fold it in half and then you need to cut along that middle line. Make sure you fold it in half the right way because I folded mine the wrong way and had to start this video again. Right. So you should have two pieces of paper like that. Now, next thing to do is to fold your piece of paper with the short side, fold it like a fan. If I'm doing like that, fold it all the way along like a fan. This is going to take a little bit of a long time. While I'm doing this, I can tell you that on Christmas Eve, you know, we normally have a crib service in church, don't we? That is lots of fun. Well, unfortunately, because of this virus, we can't have our crib service in church, but we will have a crib service on YouTube and on Facebook. And that's a crib service which has already been prepared. And I hope that you will find it lots of fun if you look for that on Christmas Eve. Right there, I've done one of my folded bits. I'm now going to do the other one. So exactly the same thing again. Fold it like a fan. So that's something to look out for on Christmas Eve, our crib service on YouTube and on Facebook. And on Christmas Day, some of you I know are already helping Hannah to get ready a children's and young people's service for Christmas Day, which will be one of those recorded services that, again, you'll be able to see on Christmas Day on YouTube and on Facebook. And we're also having services in church, but you might find that you prefer to stay where you are and to join in those services, maybe online or to watch the children's and young people's service that's already been got ready. So hopefully there are lots of different ways to join in with things in church this Christmas. Now then, two pieces of uh, folded paper like fans. Right then, the next thing is get one of your bits of folded paper and squidge it together. And a little bit among, above the middle, do a fold. Mm -hmm. That is kind of half an angel. So I'll fold like that and then get your other piece of folded paper and it's important that you get the fold at about the right height, the same height. So push that one against the piece of paper that you've already folded and then do a fold, another fold. Okay, so you should have two bits of folded paper. Now the next thing, I need to put a piece of paper down so I don't do get a terrible mess on my table. The next thing 
is to put some glue on the edge, the not sticking out edge, of one of those things. But don't put the glue right to the top, okay? That's important. Don't put the glue right to the top. Just put it on most of that fold starting at the bottom. And then get your other bit and you can stick, hopefully, those two bits together and give them a good squeeze. Okay, so that makes, that's beginning to make the angel's body, but hopefully you remembered not to stick right to the top because you need a bit of a gap there because we're going to stick other bits in it. Do you see that? There we are. Now, bits to stick in this are a head because an angel would need a head, wouldn't it? So if you get another bit of paper, I've just got this, this was one of my mistakes. I am going to, I'm going to think how big I want my head to be, my angel's head. Or maybe I want it about the size of a 10p piece. So I'm going to cut a circle about the size of a 10p piece out of my paper. Don't worry about giving it a neck because we're going to do a different sort of neck. I'm going to show you. Right, there we are. There's a head. Now, on this head, I am going to draw an angel's face. I don't know about you, but I would think an angel would have a kind face. Um, let's give it a nice red mouth. A smiling face would be good, and actually it could have nice red cheeks as well. There And then... Uh, let's give it um, some nice brown eyes. And a smiling, well, not a smiling nose, but a nose. There we go. So I've drawn a face on my angel. Can you see that? There we go. And I'm thinking about some hair. Now, you could use some wool. Stick some wool on to give it some hair. Or, I have an idea, if there's a bit of tinsel in your house, if your grown-ups will let you, maybe you could just clip a tiny bit off a piece of tinsel. There we are. It gives you some sparkles, doesn't it? And you could... I'm going to put some glue just at the top of my angel's head there, kind of on the angel's forehead. There we are, and I'm going to stick those sparkles on. And remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like because nobody knows what an angel looks like, so you can have fun. You could invent all sorts of different hairstyles. Um, no, it's maybe easier actually to kind of press the angel down like that so that the sparkles just sit on the head. There we are. There we go, so my angel looks like it needs a haircut, but there is my angel's head. Right, now then, put that to one side. The next thing you need is some sellotape. And you find the end of the sellotape and cut a bit um, that is, I don't know, about as long as half your finger and give it a cut like that. Now, you need to think about this. Actually, I think I've done that a bit early. Never mind, maybe it'll be okay. So there's, now this is tricky. If you fold your sellotape in half with the sticky side outwards, you need to put that inside. Do you see that? Can you see? Put that inside your angel's body where the fold isn't stuck with the glue. And squidge that in like that. And then hopefully, there we go, you've got a bit sticking out like that, because that is the bit that you're going to stick the angel's head onto. So, now, here we are. And that will act as a bit of a neck at the same time. There we go. There. Okay. Now, the final thing is to hang your angel up. Now, there's all sorts of things you could use. You could, if you've got some, you could use some sparkly wool or some normal coloured wool. But do you know what I thought I would use? One of these face masks, check if a grown-up minds if you do this. If you've got a face mask that you've been using that is ready to be thrown away, or one of your grown-ups has, how about 
using the strap of the face mask. So to get your scissors, cut it off. And I'll tell you why I thought, well, I'll tell you in a minute, let's stick it on first. So there is the strap of the face mask and there is our angel. Now then you're going to need another bit of sellotape. Maybe kind of a smaller, maybe two smaller bits like that, yeah. So, the strap of your face mask, if you fold the stra your strap in half, there you go, and you put your, the little bit of sellotape just over the end like that, so it's sticking on, and this is a tricky thing. Again, just peel that apart a little bit, but careful not to pull the angel's head off. Can you see what I'm doing just like that? And then stick that in and press it down. If that's too tricky, just stick it onto the back of the angel's head. I'm going to do that as well, just to make sure it feels quite strong. There we go. And that's ready to be hung on a Christmas tree or somewhere else in my house. Now I tell you why I thought it was a nice idea to use the strap of a face mask. Quite often in the Bible, in fact, you could say always in the Bible, names mean something. Names have a meaning. Do you remember the name of the angel that came to see Mary? The Bible says it was the angel Gabriel. And did you know, if ever you see the word L, E-L, that means God. It's the Hebrew for God, the Hebrew language. Gabriel means strength of God. Mary needed God's strength, didn't she, for everything that was going to happen next. So strength of God came to her, God's message of his strength in the angel Gabriel that means strength of God. Why I thought it would be nice to use a mess, um, the thing from the face mask is because there are lots of people, aren't there? Maybe us, well, all of us, who need God's strength at the moment, and maybe especially at Christmas because of this horrid virus or because of other things. So if you have a face mask strap, if you use that, maybe that will remind you to pray for God's strength for those people and for everybody who needs it, especially this Christmas time. That's the end. The angel's going to wave goodbye. Bye. Bye, guys. See you soon. See you hopefully for Christmas Eve on that YouTube or Facebook service.